Hi guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Michelle and I'm Elvis Lassie on YouTube. Today is Sunday, so therefore we're going through the co-stars, Elvis co-stars from the movies. And we've started from the very first movie, Love Me Tender, and we're working our way through. So if you haven't seen any of the past ones, please go and look on my channel. We've done Deborah Padgett, Dolores Hart, um, Judy Tyler, last week was Carlin Jones, and today it's Juliet Price because we're moving on to GI Blues 1960. Yay! So let's get cracking into Juliet Price, and we're going to find out a little bit about her, and I'm going to include some pictures to collaborate what I am telling you or what we're finding out because I don't know anything about these people before I um, do this video. So we're just going to find it out together. So let's go. So Juliet Price was born in Bombay. Oh my goodness, was she really? Bombay, British India, to an English father and a South African mother. After her father's death when she was three years old, oh my goodness, her mother returned <coughs> with her to South Africa. She began studying dance a year later at the age of four. Gosh, now you know why she's so good at dancing. She's been dancing for years. In her early 20s, she was dancing at a club in Paris when she was spotted by a talent agent Whoa, and signed to play the role of Claudette or Claudine in the Walter Lang film Can Can. Of course, Can Can. Um, she also, she had already missed a few opportunities to go to Hollywood because she was under contract, but eventually left a show in Spain in which she was starring to travel to the United States for this film. Ooh, wow. So, um, it was during the filming of Can Can in 59 that she captured the international spotlight. Um, Soviet leader visited the set of the film and after, Prowse performed a rather saucy can-can for the Russian leader. He proclaimed her dance immoral. Oh, the publicity brought Prowse considerable attention in the United States and from there her career accelerated. Whoa, that's cool. I didn't know that. So, um, film and television. Prowse met Frank Sinatra on the set of Can Can. Time did not rate the movie highly but declared Prowse the best thing in it. In fact, the only thing really worth seeing is Juliet Prowse, a young South African hoofer who puts hoofer, <laughs> who puts some twinkle in the stub-toed choreography. And the only thing really worth hearing is the crack that Frank flips back at Juliet when she whips a doubtable hip in his direction. Don't point, he gasps. It's rude. She would go on to appear with Sinatra and other notable guests such as Ella Fitzgerald, Peter Lawford, um, High Lows, Frank Sinatra show. Um, she at times would sing in the chorus with other guests or Sinatra would sing to her. Oh, well, that's cool. So Sinatra invited Prowse to join him in Vegas, even though she was living with the actor Nico Nardos at the time. Sinatra and Prowse announced their engagement in 62. Soon afterwards, they broke up, reportedly because Prowse wanted to concentrate on her career. Prowse later admitted, I was as much flattered as I was in love. He was a complex person and after a few drinks, He'd be very difficult. I've really heard that. I was watching a um, documentary on Frank a few weeks ago and he was just horrible when he'd had a drink. He was just really complex. Um, so he should never have drank, really. He should never have drank. But it's hard to give up something that you you need or is it a crutch. Um, Prowse co-starred alongside Elvis Presley and G.I. Blues in 60. Um, during shooting of this film, they had a short and intense fling. Elvis and I had an affair. We had a sexual attraction like two healthy young people, but he was already a victim of his fans. We always met in the room and never went out. Prowse also made a brief cameo appearance in the MGM documentary film Elvis That's The Way It Is. Yeah, as an interviewed audience member about to attend Elvis Presley's opening night show at the International Hotel in Vegas. I remember it now. Um, yeah, I remember her getting interviewed as well. That's the 1970 version. I've been watching the new version for so long that the 1971 slips my mind. Um, she starred with Denny Scott Miller on her own NBC sitcom in 65-66 season, Mona McCluskey, which was produced by George Burns. The series was based on the idea that the couple, Mike and Mona McCluskey, would live on his military salary rather than her lucrative earnings as an actress. Right. That sounds um, interesting. <laughs> Anybody watch that? What was it like? Prowse also did other feature films, including The Fiercest Heart in 1961 and Who Killed Teddy Bear in 1965 with Sal Menino and Elaine Stitch, if I'm saying those names right. 
Although her film and television career did not make her as big a star as predicted, Prowse had a rather philosophical way of looking at it. Things generally happen for the best. I never worry about what happens in my career because I can always do something else, which is a great way to look at life. Prowse would later on go on to headline successful Las Vegas shows, commanding a very, very high salary, um, stating that Las Vegas was the most demanding place she'd ever worked. She won Entertainer of the Year for the Vegas run of Sweet Charity. She would later show off her famous dancer legs in a series of lucrative nationwide commercials for a number of advertisers, including La Eggs, Hoisery and Mannington Florin. Does anybody remember those adverts back in the day? Prowse was the first guest on the first season of The Muppet Show. Was she? Oh my goodness, I wonder if that exists. If it is, I'm showing it now. I'd be excited. In 1987, she was mauled by the same £80 leopard on two occasions. The first time filming a scene for Circus of the Stars, then later while rehearsing a promotional stunt on The Tonight Show, the latter attack was more serious, requiring upwards of 20 stitches to reattach her ear. Oh my goodness! An £80 leopard! Well, there you go. I did not know that. It's unbelievable. Gee whiz, that must have been terrifying. Throughout the mid-80s and 90s, Prowse hosted the Championship Ballroom Dance Competition on PBS. Does people remember that? Put down in the comments below. In 1994, Pr Prowse was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. Oh, Juliet, I'm so sorry. In 1995, she went into remission and was well enough to tour with Mickey Rooney and Sugar Babies. The cancer subsequently returned and she died on September 14th, 1996. Oh, two years after. 11 days short of her 60th birthday. Oh. Her ex-husband, television actor John McCook, is the father of her only child, Seth. Oh, my goodness. Oh, it's quite sad, that. Well, um, Juliet was married to Eddie Frazier in 1969 to 1970 and John McCook 1972 to 1979 and she had one child only with um, John McCook. Well, that was an epic tale. There was lots there. She'd done lots. Um, I can imagine because she was on adverts and on TV, um, I'm sure she would be remembered. So does everyone remember her from the adverts and things like that? Because I find adverts or commercials, if you'd call them in America, you see them every single day, all the time. So you get to know these people who are in these commercials. Um, I didn't know any of that about Juliet. Um, and I look, there is a story from Juliet and Elvis, isn't it? When they're in the trailer and the boys were pretending that Frank was knocking on the door like, hey, it's Frank. And then they'd be like, oh, it's not even Frank. And then this one time it was Frank, <laughs> but they never got caught. I mean, um, infidelity should never be laughed at, but I guess if we could bring them back now, let them do what they want to do. I wish they were here. Um, life is for living and as long as they're not hurting anybody but yeah it's a funny story and the boys I must have had a great laugh on set um, so yeah I love GI Blues I think it's beautiful I love them together she's the real ice maiden in GI Blues and I think she was perfectly cast because you can believe you would not win the bet with Lily that is for sure I don't know about the chemistry between them even though they maybe had this kind of on set uh, love affair um, I don't feel that it oozed sex appeal in the movie, but that's my personal opinion. What do you guys think of their relationship together in GI Blues? Do you think it was sizzling hot? Let me know all your thoughts. So yeah, thanks for joining me on this one. It was brilliant learning about Juliet. I really, really enjoyed it. Please come back for next week for another co-star and I shall see you then. Bye everyone.